Sir, we are live. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome. Uh, proceeding before the Code Enforcement Special Magistrate for the City of Palatka. By way of introduction, my name is Ron Brown. I'm an attorney licensed in the state of Florida. <laughs> state statute and city code, I've been appointed by a city commission for the city of Palatka to preside over today's proceedings. These proceedings are governed by Chapter 162 of the Board of Statutes, as well as the pertinent sections of the Palatka Code, which deal with code enforcement. This is not a formal court of law. We do not follow the formal rules of evidence. We do not follow the formal rules of civil procedures you might find in a court of law. Statutes and codes, however, do require that we follow the basic rules of fair play and due process to make sure everyone has an opportunity to be heard and that we issue a decision that's based on substantial and confident evidence and it's a reasonable decision given the testimony and evidence that's presented. The only thing we'll be considering today or what we see in here in this room today that will be the basis for any decision that will be written. The city will be making a presentation concerning alleged violations of the code. And they'll be citing the code provisions and they will show us the uh, evidence in support of the violation. Those of you who are here as respondents will have an opportunity to come and to present any testimony and evidence that you may have with regard to those violations. Uh, at the conclusion of that, and any questions anyone may have, feel free um, during your opportunity to speak. If you have any questions you wish to ask your staff with me, um, well, I'll be glad to answer those. They'll be glad to answer those. Keep in mind, I am not an attorney representing the city. I'm not an attorney representing you. I am a special manager. My job is to just make a decision in regard to whether there's a violation. And the only thing I can do is make a decision based on the evidence and the law. So, one of the requirements, however, of the proceeding, again under state law, is that all testimony must be sworn. So, I'm going to ask everyone who will be testifying today. And who is here today to please stand. Well, I ask you to confirm the good to when you come up. Raise your right hand and take the following oath. You saw me swear or affirm that the testimony you should give today should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. The record shows that all so the fourth officials and all respondents in the audience who are participating in the confirm it. We take the case in the order of the agenda, the exception being, as you may have noticed, that those of you who are here prior to the beginning of the meeting. We will take those who come in person and get them priority on the basis of who, here, who got here first. So those of you who got here earlier will get a chance to press new book. That being the case, the first case uh, will be case number 2023-61, the property located at 512 Emmett Street. My records indicate the owner is Daniel Gornta. Yes, sir. Okay, you Mr. Gornta? Yes, yeah. yeah. And behind us. And it's going to be important that when you come out, that you speak into that mic. And the reason for that is that we're making a recording of this that is the record for the hearing. In the case of any appeal, that will be the official record. Recording. So make sure you speak into that in your room. The only other thing I can ask is as a matter of courtesy, we're going to take things in the order of city making a presentation. The uh, respondent will have a chance to make a presentation. Um, any questions that come up, uh, just keep your order because we don't want to have any testimony and statements stepping on top of each other. It's important to keep that very clear. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Dan Rizmonte. He is going to speak in for me because. Who is he? My name is Dennis Byrne. I'm a friend of neighborhood in the neighborhood. All right. Just so you know, Mr. Gorto is the one who is the respondent here. Dan, yeah, Dan. All right. So you know. All right. So what's going to happen? The city's going to begin. Uh, this is the uh, two cases. This quick case. Yes, All right. She's going to begin. The photographs that are going to be presented will be presented up here. There will be reference according to which section of the code uh, the alleged violation occurs. It doesn't matter of preliminary information. It looks like the city has five violations. One of 30-32A of the code regarding prohibited conditions and public nuisances due to deteriorating building. Uh, another section of section 30-32A for overgrown grass, trees, broken tree limbs on the property. Uh, the third violation, again from 30-32A, prohibited conditions due to trash and debris. Uh, a fourth violation alleged, prohibited conditions and public nuisances, roofing and disrepair. And the fifth violation alleged, violation of section 30-171, Windows to broken windows. The uh, references for each of these ordinances are included in the record on appeal. So, Ms. Love? Yes, sir. Um, this violation was first observed March 22nd, 
Um, we set it for hearing and posted on May 1st. We did not receive any green cards back. Um, we did the complex posting on May 6th and a site posting on May 1st. And this is... Um, Before we begin, let me make sure I got a couple things on due process. Yes, sir. Um, Warto, it looks like they sent notice to you. Uh, hang on a minute. Look at the address at 512 Emmett Street, and that's the address of the property. Is that correct? Do you live at the property? No, I live next door. Okay. But that is the correct mailing address for the property? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, there are cities required by law to send the notice to the official address of record on the property for your tax collector jewel. That is that record. And did you get the um, did you get a letter from the city with regard to this? I got. Yes, I'm on my fence post. All right. It looks like the, the Postal Service returned the city certified letter as vacant, unable to forward. Just so you know that the official address for the property, the Postal Service thinks is vacant. And so that's why they put the property so that when the letter comes back unclaimed, they're going to go through the statutory requirement to post the property both at the property and here at City Hall, which there's an affidavit in the record that shows that this low in fact did that. Just so you know, and any order that we get today is going to go to the 512 industry unless you have another address where you get your mail. You need to get the mail, man, take the mail and put it in my mama's mailbox. That's where I get my mail at here. Mm -hmm. Couple of years. We'll go to the post office to make sure that we have the address forwarded to the address right next door. Just so you know, the post office is in your um, necessary delivery certified mail or whatever. So, okay. just so you know, and so I got to be mindful. Okay. So, you make sure you got the new thing. But you are here. This is a good sign. All right, Miss Lowe, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Um, this is a photo 1A that was taken on March 22nd, 2023, uh, showed the uh, where the building is deteriorating. All right, and this the allegation this is a violation of 30 32 a will be deteriorating. What about 30 32 a is deteriorating? The top part of the roof, the sides of the structure are all in the okay. No, when you get what about you? She gets a study that you get a job. What about this needs to be what needs to be done to bring this into compliance for the city? Replace, repair, or remove, sir. The roof. The roof. The roof's completely yeah, the roof's pretty gone. gone. Yes. All right. Next. And that's a follow-up picture where there was no changes. And this is a, another photograph as to the roof needing to be placed. Yes, sir. Okay. Or the building deteriorating. This shows. Um, this is picture two A. Um, shows where the windows are missing and broken windows. It was taken on March twenty second, twenty twenty three. And this is the follow-up um, of the same view, which still shows the windows broken or missing. It's taken on April 24, 2023. Is there any roof on this property? No. No, sir. It burned down. So the representative yes, the city that the respondent would have to roof the property completely. Yes. Sir. And either board up or put windows in the open. That's right. This is the picture that shows the roofing and disrepair. It was taken on March 22nd, 2023. So the follow-up picture, um, same thing, roofing and disrepair. It was taken on April 24th, 2023. And this is a picture of the front yard where um, trash and debris are in the front yard visible from the roadway. So the trash and debris is just man-made material? So it's wood. Um, there's some trash. Um, a lot of miscellaneous pieces from the house laying around. We're not talking about vegetation at this point. No, it's sir. Material. Okay. Yes, sir. And this is another view of the, the debris. And this shows the, this is a picture taken on March 22nd, 2023, um, at the front of the little house. It's the overgrown grass trees. It's got some broken limbs on the property. So what? needs to be done to bring that into compliance. How much of that needs to be removed is my question. 
just where it's overgrown um, and some of it's growing into the house. So that would that would need to be removed and cut back. So it's like on walkways or it's not on the walkway yet. It's just over the fence, pushing through the fence area, the overgrown ones are. And then there's some that are dead laying down in the yard. So to clear the walkways and get it out of the fence. Yes, sir. Okay. That's just another uh, view that was taken on April 24th, just showing that the same view. What are you looking for in terms of time? On 90 this, days? Yes, sir, with 90 to or 120 days. So what has to be done in the 90 days? Um, any permits pulled that are necessary and get the building secured. So the permit would be required for roof construction. Roof and any kind of construction, um, demolition, anything that the mm homeowner -hmm. wants to do. But that we're talking about what we're talking about is roof, correct, window openings, yes, sir, and vegetation that on the walkways and the fencing, uh, and then any broken trees or limbs are done, and then the man-made or debris in the yard. Yes, sir. The limbs and the debris can be done within 90 days. Yes, sir. Does the window replacement require a permit? It's probably going to require permits. Okay, so if they get permits for the window replacement and the roof mm -hmm. within 90 days and remove the debris within 90 days, they will be in compliance for the city. That's correct. The, how long does the permit last? Most of them last up to six months. Yes, All right, where it is, you know, and I, this is, is it in the Southern Historic District? Yes, yes, Ms. Walsh, would you like to say something? Why not? Before we get to y'all, raise your right hand for me. Make sure you, you saw me swear from the testimony she'll give today. She will give today. She's an open question for I do. Please don't identify yourself. You're in the historic district. You get the benefit of her wisdom. Thank you. Right. <laughs> I'm Lisa Walsh, planning director for the city of Palaka. This property is located in the historic district, the South Historic District specifically. And it will need a certificate of appropriateness for any and all repairs. How does that fit into the permit requirements and for review? For review, as far yeah. as the timeline, if the applicant were to submit an application this week, it could make the July meeting. If not, so it would be the looking for getting the certificate of appropriateness before the end of the 90 days. Well, they, would, they would need that prior to getting a permit. Yes, sir. They would a building permit okay. for anything. All right, so you've got yourself a little lockstep timing issue according to the city. Mm -hmm. But I got so basically, and Aaron is looking at Monday, August 15th is the last day for compliance. Yes, sir. What the city's look asking for, they're entitled to this, is by the end of the day on August 15th, 2023, you will have to have gone through historic review and get your permit application. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. <laughs> okay. Identify yourself for the record. There too. My name is Dennis Byrne, B Y R N. Yes, sir. So the plan is to demolish and take down the house. The house is not salvageable. There is no roof. The house caught fire. The uh, supporting floor joists are burnt. Um, a couple of years ago, pre-COVID, he had a demolition permit from the county. I called this morning. They told me that the permit is still valid, that we could start demo today, and that when we're done, all we need to do is call them to have them come close out the permit. Let me ask you something. I know a little bit about local government law. Demolition might trigger another uh, historic architectural issue. So then I came to the city okay. before the meeting, I have to speak to Lisa, and her assistant told me, so we have the application. I was told we had by the end of the month to get it on the July uh, agenda. Um, so we are submitting to demo the house. Um, I have contacted two contractors. Um, so we are in a holding pattern until the July meeting of the historic board. Now, the county told me the permit's still valid. I believe he had a certificate of appropriateness for demolition a couple of years ago, but that expired. How long is it still valid for? What, the permit with the county? 
they're usually six months out. Now, now again, I'm a state license alarm contractor. I just moved here, but when I, I called the building department this morning, gave them the address, and she specifically told me, you know, I said, is there any fee to have the permit reinstated? It hasn't expired. She pulled the address up and she told me that the permit is still valid. I understand that. Okay. But it might be filled out for a month or it might be filled out for well, it's not valid since COVID, um, three or four years. Um, I can make the trip down there to find out the specific phone of the permit. I would not believe it would be expiring anytime soon. Well, if it's been open for three years. years. Yeah. First of all, let me just make sure you clear this out here. Is there any question he has about? Anyone has about the five violations that were alleged? No, the house is going to be demoed. That being the case, now we're looking at the solution to the violations. The solution to the violation, the, the city was looking for, you know, get a permit for the roof and permit for the window to clean up the yard. You're saying, I want a permit to, or your, your person you represent wants a permit to demolish it. You say you have one from the county, but I don't know. He might look at that and say, "Wouldn't that, the, the, that thing expire?" Was it proof for the okay, I, 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 this is not a conversation oh, about okay. this is a hearing. Okay. My the only question is, if I enter an order that says you have to have compliance by the end of August 15, 2023, then you need a permit for that work by that time. Correct. And you have to go through a historic architectural review. Correct, and we're right. working on submitting that within the next month. Well, that's fine. I'll leave that up to you to sort that out. But if you don't have a permit that lasts, you know, long enough to be of use to you, you you'll never get to the the historic architecture review. Just so you know. Oh, no. Okay. So you may have to go ahead and apply for another. No, just that I can no problem following up with the county on this permit. Are we on the same page with the city and how this will be? That being the case, what it looks like to me, you have violations of 30 days, 32 a there are four of them regarding the deteriorating building, the overgrown grass, three broken tree limbs on the property, trash and debris, roofing disrepair, and I did not inquire. Did you take all the photographs you presented? Yes, sir. Of I did. And do the acting represent the condition of the property that you could? Yes, sir. Do you have anything else you want to offer in terms of any evidence or testimony other than a solution? I already cleaned the yard up, picked all the tree branches up, and uh, I'll be getting on the fence, cutting it well, up. Well, then you need to make sure you get in contact with Ms. Lowe before the end of the day on August 15th to make sure she sees that all that's done. Okay. All right? And then you need to make sure she understands also before that day that you have a permit in hand and you clear historic architectural review. Okay. All right? Okay. Then there are lots of You got to have to have a permit before you get over there. Ms. Walk, the, the architecture review requires some demonstration of what's going to be built in place of the demolished structure? No, sir. Mm -hmm. No, sir, it is not. Right. There, are there are no guarantees for the approval of the There are jurisdictions where you can't take it down until you show them what you're going to build in place of it. This is not one of those, apparently. Okay. So I, I apologize. I believe there is a provision. In there for that? Yes. So to get approval from architecture review, then you only have to have a permit to demolish it. You have to have how much of a rendering to show what's going to go there no. in replacement. I'm um, not certain on that one. I'm sure it's a set of plans or at least a, a preliminary conceptual plan. Right. Just so you know. Okay. It's uh, a big process. No, I'm sorry. So uh, am I to understand? And we're fine to remove the house because it can't be saved. They're going to be required to build a new structure on that lot. Yes. That is my understanding. Yeah. That's the way it's currently code. Again, that's a matter I don't get to deal with. Mm -hmm. I just want you to understand the nature of the compliance issue. I feel like they tear it down and leave it at an empty lot. Sorry? How can I not tear it down and leave it at an even lot? Because that's not what the code apparently provides. There's several houses that have been done like that. And I can't talk about those cases. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Thank you. All right. So, if that's the case, what we're going to do is find a violation of 30 32 a for the deteriorating building, the overgrown grass tree, broken tree limbs on the property, trash and debris, the, the roofing and disrepair. 
and a violation of 30 171 for broken windows. I will enter order uh, finding a violation requiring compliance uh, with the um, violations no later than the end of the business on August 15th, 2023. That's 90 days. For any reason, you can't meet that deadline. You need to be on the stick and get in touch with this load and let them know what's going on. But if you don't, then the fines are going to start. Fines are 25 bucks per violation per day. And it's $125 a day. And if you get in compliance with two of them, then they'll knock $50 a day off that. If at the end of that time, you know, there's not compliance, the city can come back and ask for a lien to be placed on the property for the time. But that does have some bite. That is something that's provided for the state law and city code. Okay? Yes, sir. You'll be getting a letter. Make sure they have a good address for you or the certified mail. Because otherwise, they're going to post it. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay? All right. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you for coming. Thanks, sir. Appreciate yeah. your patience. Next case, um, case number 2023 property located at 506 Mosley Avenue, under the record with Frederick and Valerie Frederick, husband and wife. Yes, sir. Who are you? Richard Frederick. Thank you for coming. All right, Mr. Frederick, you've seen some of the uh, protocol already. Uh, this is Mr. Green's case, is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, we have an alleged violation of Section 30 169, building plants and sides, uh, letting streets in public areas, which basically requires a you know, some consistent good coat of paint uh, for the parts that can be seen. Just for a brief review, one moment, and double check our due process. Um, Looks like they sent the letter to the 506 Mosley Avenue address, but the green card was not signed. Did you get a no. notice back as to why? No, sir. I spoke with Mr. Richard. Um, we got the letter. Did you see it I got a warrant. Is that, is that the correct address for you? It is. And we received the letter. I don't know why the part was. Well, no, man. No, man. Okay. There is a green card signed. That was no, that was volunteer. That was volunteer for clients. Okay. All right, just so you know, we got the right address in your ear. All right, uh, Mr. Green, you guys need two violations. Okay. Tell us about it. Um, well, for the third report, one violation is good. It was the report, the report 17 23, and those pen was sent 5 2 23. Um, did not receive a green card or bite. Um, because the posting was 5 6 23, 23 and site posting was 5 2 23. All right, just let me make sure we're on the same page. This section of the code looks like all deteriorated structural and decorative elements visible from a public right away should be put in place. Every part of the structure visible from a public right away or bloody street should be made structurally sound. Rod and weaker portions should be removed, prepared, or replaced. In a manner compatible with the rest of the building, all exposed wood like, should be stained or painted. So is that what we're looking at? Yes. Like Thank you, material. Thank you. All right. Did you take the photographs you're about to show us? Yes. Do the IP represents conditions of property on the day that you took? Yes. All right. Please proceed. This was taken on April 13, 2023. Deteriorated paint in the lot in the wood. So did you get the paint flaking on this? Uh, it's peeling. Okay. What back up? It says we can wood. Yes, sir. Where is that? Right. We can wood. The dark part. That above the windows, maybe? Yes. Oh, below the windows. Yes, uh, the whole <laughs> wall. And the ventilation area and the gable? Yes. Okay. This is taking me 12, 22, and 3. This is taking April 13th, 2023. This is taking me 12, 22, and 3. 413, 23, 22, 23. And May 12, 23. All right, which sides are we looking at? Which, which? Um, that's, I think that's Diana. This one. On Diana Mobley. Street? Is that that's Mobley, so that's Mobley, and then the other side. Mobley's on the front. Yes, sir. Diana's on the side. Yes, sir. Is the house on the corner? Yes, sir. This is taking April 13, 22, 23. All right, we'll go back to the beginning. Of the, you know, 
Okay, what needs to be done to bring that side of the park into compliance? Is that the Mosley side? That's the dining side. Oh, yeah. Okay, what needs to be done? What needs to be done there? I'll remove the place and the care um, and get a fresh uniform coat of paint. I'm sorry? Okay. A uniform fresh coat of paint. What about weekend wood? Um, we prepare a place to move. All right, he just needs to know what needs to be done to bring it into compliance. Yes, sir. So, can you point out where the weekend wood is? Under the window and the under top. The, all right, on the top. Yes, sir. Next one. That's a vented area. Okay, next. That's, that's not rotting, it's vented. Hang on, one time. Next. What needs to be done there? Um, we play with place the rotten wood. Where? Right there, that panel right there. Show me with your mm -hmm. motion. Here? Yes, the other side. So it's behind the panel. This. Other side also. Right the other side. The shutters. This. Yes. Could you be repaired? Yes. Yes, sir. Next. Same picture? Yes. yes. Same area. And that wood in the middle. Okay. Next. It just needs to be painted. Yes. Crape and paint. And there are also the scraped and paint. Is that the same picture? I mean, it's different dates, same, same place. What needs to be done here? This is a photo four looking at the two car garage. It's a new um, prison farm coat of paint, and the police are repaired the rotten wood. Could those garage doors? Yes, sir. What do you think need to be done to those? Um, remove a place of repair. Rotten wood. New farm, a new farm, fresh coat of paint. Okay, can you see those from Diana or? Yes, Diana. Okay, next. This back to Diana's side. Yes. Number four B. Yes, four B. First one was um four. So what you're telling me is that the city's view of compliance is scrape and paint at least the Mosley and Diana sides. Yes. Replace the rotten wood underneath the upstairs windows on the Diana side. Looks like the top of the cable or the peak of the roof on the Diana side, as well as the garage door. Yes, right. And on the Mosley side, what? Just paint. Just paint, yeah. scrape and paint. Does this require a permit? No, sir. So you're asking for 90 days to do this. Yes, sir. Is that practical in this day and time, given availability of contractors? What if they, so what if they make a good faith effort to get a contractor and they'll get one? I don't know what the situation is. Well, here with the contract. well and that's a good, good question. Uh, if he's, if the private owner shows that they're trying to make, and they keep informing us of what's going on, they're having delayed, we will look at extending at least 30 more days up to 120 days. Uh, but right now, we just want to get to get the property into compliance at some spot. All right, Mr. Frederick, you've been patient. Thank you for that. Your turn. <laughs> So I think the city should recognize that I've made significant efforts to improve the property already. Um, I discussed all of this with Mr. Green. Um, I hope, perhaps, that they give me the additional time they're asking for anyway. But he insisted on that we had to come to the hearing. And of course, that's the city's prerogative. Um, two months ago, three months ago, um, we replaced the entire roof. Be happy to provide a copy of the invoice for that as well. And quite honestly, $22,000 sort of cuts into budget for what you can afford to replace. The painting on the side of the house makes no sense without repairing the other damage first. I did talk to a contractor last week. Um, if he were to schedule the entire job, it would be December before he can come. He might be able to fit some other work in between other jobs and get it done before that. Anything short of that means that I'm going to be paying to paint wood that may have to be replaced. Certainly makes no sense to paint the house twice. 
So I would like to see more than the 90 days provided. How long have you owned the house? Since 1998. And you made other improvements on the house other than the roof? Yes. What, what have you done to it? I replaced on the back side uh, a lot of the fascia and the soffit underneath. There's been work inside as well. Quite honestly, a lot of the problem with the paint is that the previous paint job was just latex paint sprayed over what was already there. They caught it, they sprayed it, and that's why it peeled. The siding itself is mostly bevel cypress, which there are places where there is mildew, and there are places where there's some deterioration, but the wood is not like some other types of site. What kind of wood is it? Yeah. That most of it is one of those cypress though? The, the contractor told me last week that most of it is beveled cypress. The old days of black building. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Green, where are we with this? He's, I mean, what, what brought this to me if he's making progress on the house? Sure. I mean, I'm, he's making progress on the house with a roof on top. Uh, what, what has caused the city to decide that to use uh, well, innovation? The city policy is that we are not going to uh, stop the process of bringing houses that's not in compliance to the hearing until they are in compliance. And then we can give them time on the back end if they are showing good faith that they're doing it. And that's the reason why Mr. Green did come to me and ask. And we are aware that you are trying to do things, but then it still is out of compliance into the in the window that we have for this property. We brought it to the hearing studio. We are willing to work with you, but you have, from what I'm reading now, you said December is the earliest possible time that your contractor can do the work you're asking for. That's the earliest point that he could schedule the entire job to be done. And what is, what actually is the job he's asked? What what are you asking him to do? Now? The demo or tear down anything. So if you'll right. forgive me, I don't feel like I need Please. to disclose that information because it just gives you more reasons to come cite me. Okay. Here's the thing the city has wields a, a certain amount of authority with this in terms of what they could do. Hang on. And you know, you can tell from my questions previously, I'm concerned that yes, and when we will have authority, it has to be done in a reasonable way. And, and usually, when they come here, it's because they've had difficulty getting the owner to comply otherwise. And they start bringing out the hammer and says, I need to have this to hang over their heads to get something done. But what I'm hearing is, is that there's no real disagreement there's a violation. There's a disagreement as to the order of things in terms of putting this house back into a usable form. Does appear the owner has been making some progress has owned the house for periods of time. Um, the city believes apparently that more progress should be done more, more quickly. Uh, the contractor, I mean, the owner indicates that you can have a contractor at work sometime in December, it looks like. The question is you know, you, you come in here and say, I want to have this done within 90 days, and there's no contractor. That was my question earlier. What's the city doing in those circumstances? Well, like I said earlier, if he, we can discuss and if his contract can give us some definitive that he would, and December is the stretch that I'm looking at. You're looking at seven months uh, of this sitting the way it's sitting, and, and we don't want to share, uh, and I understand that, but I'm trying to make sure we do not let this go unaddressed because it has been unaddressed for a while. What kind of assurance would satisfy the city between now and August 15th that this is going to be done? Maybe a binding contract of between him and his his contract he's dealing with that December time frame would be a starting point for him to do the work that they got going on. He knows what can get in the way of that, but yeah. how does that work for you? Honestly, Mr. Brown, I'm trying to find out what I've got to do to get the city off of my back so that we can do things in the proper order that make the most well, right sense. Right now. Only thing I can look at is what's in front of me today. What's in front of me today is basically painting this house with some relatively, I don't know how far the, the wood situation is, but they've only pointed to a couple of areas where there's a wood deterioration issue. To be honest with you, they, they only got authority to complain about two sides of the house, the ones on Mosley and the one on Diana. But the way that the ordinance reads is what's visible from the street. 
That being the case, you know, do you want to partially paint a house? That's up to you all. Right now, compliance is get the house painted on those two sides, fix these two areas where there's some some roof, I mean some some deteriorating wood. And I think that's it in a nutshell. I mean, what I'm hearing from him is as to those matters, and you get something that you know gives the city some comfort that there's somebody on board to do this work. Yes. You can do that. Is that satisfied? Is that right? Yes. Right. Do you have a for that? Uh, right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Go to the compliance issue. Here's the thing. Thank you. you might you end up back here if you know come December, nothing's going on in this house. And what I would suggest you do is maintain some contact with the city in terms of trying to get this. And I this is not too. this is not my issue. The city if they're under a little political pressure on this blight. Situation that they're into, and there are a lot of cases that are now coming mm -hmm. before me mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. code enforcement compliance. Well, you're going to see more and more. Just be the stick and the stick papers. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. what we're going to do is I'm going to find the violation of 30 169 of the municipal code, building front and side, specifically on Mosley and Miami Drive, Mosley Avenue and Miami Drive, due to deteriorating paint and the deteriorating wood in a couple of the locations which have been noted on the record. Uh, we'll have 90 days from today's day to complete compliance. That is, by the end of business on Monday, August 15, 2023. Compliance should be uh, some type of uh, proof satisfactory to the city that there is a contractor on board who can solve the violations that have been cited by that time. So that's what you deal with in the context of that time. Right now, the only thing in front of me is these two buttons. Right? Right, and this address uh, 506 Mosley, they'll be given a certified letter to that and see what Okay, thank you for your patience. Sure. Okay, guys, it's getting warm. Lisa's back there fanning herself. <laughs> I understand this building's 100 and 100 years old. It's about to go age. It did not come here. It did not come with air conditioning, but it's here and they closed off all the doors. So. We're going to need a little ventilation. I've got it now, so we should be pulling it off here. So, because you just don't know what this town is like with air conditioning. All right, here we go. Uh, third case today is going to be case number 2023-60, property 212 South 14th Street. Uh, owner uh, record, hang on. The, uh, the theme is that correct? Um, my name is Billy Pineo Shini. I'm power of attorney for Cal Kathy. Okay, Kathy. Okay, really good. Um, he's incarcerated. Is the theme hours? Is that correct? He's incarcerated at present, has been since okay. June of okay. 2022. All right, sorry to hear that. Well, you do you have a power of attorney? I have power of attorney, yes, sir. All right, uh, this case belongs to Ms. Lowe? Yes, sir. It doesn't matter before we get started. Yes, what address do we have for the respondent? You got notice of something. Uh it went his mother got a notice somehow for the PO or for the post office in St. Augustine, and I went and picked it up. Um, I gave her his address. We own a home in Palm Coast, and that is his address. All right. His physical address. Yeah, the address is 46 Netflix Street in St. Augustine. No, it should be 137 Point Pleasant. So if if there is there was been for that address, but is there another that's address? his mother's address? Is that be satisfactory? I mean, I I've been saying it took me a while, while to get a hold of it. I hope you get lost it. Oh, yeah. Um yeah, um, she has been sending stuff though. I would just like to confirm that was one three four point pleasant. One three seven. One three seven pleasant drive, Palm Coast Florida, three two one six four. 32164 Palm Coast. Okay. And I'll have the findings of that to reflect that, sir. All right. All right, slow. Yes, sir. Um, this was first observed on March 22nd, 23rd, the violations. Um, the notice for hearing was sent May 1st, 2023. Um, the green card wasn't signed, um, was not returned um, on either one, the hearing or um, the 10-day compliance. It was posted on May 6th and site posted on May 1st. And this was one of the original pictures that I took on March 14, 2023 of Rotten Week and Wood. 
it's up on the rim of the, the house where the blue arrows are. Okay. Now, the two violations alleged one of section 30 169 D as a delta for building fronts and sides of bloody streets or public areas, mold and mobile and structure. And a section 30-169 B as in Bravo, building fronts and sides of bloody streets or public areas, what and weeping wood. So basically, um, we've got mold and mildew and rotten and weakened wood on the street front sides of the property. That's correct, sir. Is this property side up on more than one street? Uh, no, sir. So it only struck, excuse me, uh, front it's only south faces street. South Park Street. This is this door? I'm sorry. No. no, sir. All right, please proceed. And the next photo is it's just an updated um, after some work was done, but you can still see the rotten weakened wood facing the road. So in that photo, can you point out oh you've got the where the arrows are, it's completely this is black and the eve of the roof yes. the Correct on that mm -hmm. side. And the other side is you can see where it's it's rotten and weakened. Just like on the underlay of the yes, sir. That's just a better version of what we're looking at. Um, that was taken on March 14th. And that was the updated version on April 25th when I did the follow up. This was taken on March 14th. It's a little hard to see. It's black, it's got some mold and mildew, and also talking to the property owner, it's got some fire damage right there. This is a little bit better picture of it. Um, you can see the mold and mildew, and then where the fire damage, um, where the property owner showed me the fire damage was. So go back and make sure we're clear just exactly what weakened wood needs to be replaced. The mildew is on the street side. Yes, sir. And that's going to be pressure washed. Yes, sir. That'd be enough. Yes, sir. Okay. This is the roof eave. Yes, sir. Okay. To the right of the house as you look at it from the street. Correct. Okay. That's the same picture there. And then the roof eave underneath the roof uh, on the left side of the house as you look at it. Correct. Facing the street. So that would need to be replaced as long as the eave on the right side and it needs to be pressure washed. Yes, sir. Did you take all the photographs you're presenting today to demonstrative evidence? Yes, sir, I did. And do they accurately represent the condition of the property today which you took them? Yes, sir, they do. Hi, <laughs> thank you for your patience. This is an unusual duty. Yeah. Um, no, what can you, well, first of all, any response to the allegation? Okay, yeah. Okay, first of all, a lot of it is smoke damage. The house burned down as a tax deed property. Cassie has been incarcerated since June of 2022. My main issue here is time. Like I've studied and cleaned up the yard. I have recent pictures from this people. Okay, I've, I've done everything. I'm having an issue with the neighbors also parking in the yard, throwing trash in the yard. So when there's trash and stuff, like even like literally I cleaned it Saturday and came back and there's trash in the yard and corn cobs and stuff like that on Sunday. So, you know, all those type of things, like I can't control the neighborhood doing that. I've ripped up the fence and everything else that she has. I'm going there. I work 65 hours a week and I go there on the weekend with my kids to do all this. Um, now, as far as the roof and all that's concerned, I do not argue that there's weakened potted wood, um, but I have neither of the resources nor the know-how which Cassie does, and Cassie was repairing the home before he got incarcerated. Um, he had an issue prior to that because of the access to the street and stuff like that, um, because that whole street was tore up uh, for quite some time, and they were right in front of the house for a while. Um, they just put down a new sidewalk and new road and all that. Awesome. Um, really, what I need is time. He has another seven or eight months left of his sentence. Well, if I might add, you talk about time, and, and we've said this before in other cases, usually these things do not get as far as coming before the special magistrate unless there has been some difficulty in trying to. I was unaware of it until. So... And I'm sure you are, in the sense of what, what how this works. And Mr. Howard's been incarcerated for a year. When did he get out? Um, he's got eight more months of the sentence left. What the actual, I mean, Around he's not my business. He, he's, eligible, he's, he's eligible for game time, possibly September, but most likely December. With the real likelihood 
He's, does he have the resources to do this? Um, he uses reclaimed wood. He does. He does know how to do the roof and all that. That's what he does. His handyman work and all that. Um, he did all the work inside. He already had a permit once and was doing work inside the house. So his solution is he's going to do the work himself. Pretty much. So that's not going to happen for at least eight months. Yes. So right now, like I said, so you're not going to be I, I cannot do that. I don't have the sort of the resources. I mean, we spend a lot of money on lawyer fees, as you can imagine, and all that other good stuff. We are pretty much tapped out at this point right now. Um, and I don't have the know either. So to hire somebody, I mean, something like I can pressure wash the house, I could even kill the front of it if where the smoke damage is. I don't know pressure washing it's going to take the smoke damage off because that's what it is smoke damage. The house previously burned. Well, what is the structural condition of this house? Does anyone know? Um, the back of it, he's rebuilding the back of it, but the inside he's pretty much taken care of with the previous permits. But the outside, I have noticed like there's some termite damage in some of the places. He's going to have to pull off and repair. And like most definitely where she's got arrows, it needs repair. Um, the roof, he had started on the roof, but like I said, he got incarcerated. He had no intention of putting it in the carpet. So no one really knows whether this house can actually be saved as opposed to just demolished. I am not no one here in that house. area. No. Mm -hmm. So what's this, what's been the city's he, procedure he, he when you have the owner who is incarcerated? I can give all the orders I want about clients, but I'm mm -hmm. jail, guys. Well, I mean I uh, did you know he was incarcerated? No, I did not know that. I mean, they're entitled to an order, but if, you know, I can tell you right now, you, you know full well I'm not going to have any compliance probably for another eight months at the earliest in the next year. I mean, I, I'll continue to work on the property what I can, but like that stuff, I can't do. I'm just going to be honest right now. I can't do it, and I don't have the means to so, do it right now. Can you, can I speak? Sure. Can you, uh, uh, the, the pressure washing and, and I guess the beautification of the housing, which you can't, um, pretty sure the roof issues probably will require a permit. Mm -hmm. uh, can you seek the permit? Because the, the permit don't have a six month lifetime span. So that right there will put you. Yeah, how do I go about getting the permit? Uh, mm -hmm. and this so load, if I don't complete it by the time that permit's up, can I get another said, permit? This will be glad to give you some yeah. information. So very okay. responsive. Okay. And you'll probably work with your situation. It, 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 however, I can. To nail the time, the time thing is really the only issue, and right? Yes. How many permits are needed? No, I would probably say a roof permit, uh, depending on what you want to do the roof is remove it, replace it, or repair it. But a roof permit to re remove, replace, repair, or replace something that we can wood, white wood, like you can trim on a whole roof off if you want to. In doing that, I would give you 120 days to cure that permit. And then you have six months of the permit life shelf. Okay. So by my calculation, that would put you right in time for you to be coming home. You know, right now. Like all the other stuff I can do, we've been going out there every weekend since I got the notice. And like, I mean, because it was a mess. Like, I ain't even lie to you. Like, there's trash buried in the ground and trying to get that fence out and everything else. And it's just me and my kids doing it on weekends. Did you use what's 120 days? 120 days is September 13th. It is the Wednesday, sir. Right, what we're going to do, um, and thank you for everybody's participation in the usual set of facts. Uh, we're going to find a violation of, looks like section uh, 130, excuse me, 3169D, building fronts and sideways, streets of public areas, low and more building structure, and 30-169B, building fronts and sideways, streets of public areas, rotten and weakened wood. Um, so we're going to find a violation. And require compliance by obtaining the necessary permits for the rotten and weakened wood within 120 days, that is, by the end of business on September 13th, 2023. As to the pressure washing, Mr. Cutwright? Yes. Uh, you do that within 120 days also? Yes. Okay, so we'll have that. Mm -hmm. the building needs to be pressure washed. At least the side is facing 14. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a problem doing all that. Like I said, it's the other stuff that I just can't do. In the event of non compliance, there will be a $25 day fine, which will approve the clock from the beginning of the day after the last day of compliance, which will be September 14th, 2020. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. The letter will come to 
He directs its record, um, which is what? So that's been updated to 137 Port Pleasant Drive, Palm Coast, and 2164. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you for your patience. Appreciate you. That's about it. Okay. Case number 2023, 411 Royal Street, Honolulu, Tony Vestal. Please come forward. Are you Mr. Vestal? Yes, sir. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for your patience. Well, Ms. Lowe, is your face? Yes, sir, it is. Um, this is case number 2023-049, 411 Laurel Street. Um, first observed the violations on March 9, 2023. The notice of hearing was sent um, May 1st. I did not receive any green cards back to the 10-day compliance for the hearing. It was posted, complex posting May 6th and site posting May 1st. And this is um, just the front picture facing um, Laurel Street. All right, so let me sure we got a couple things. Yes, Some uh, record keeping. Looks like we have three late violations of 30 32 B, Bravo of the Code, Rehabilitation Condition Nuisance of Trash and Debris in the Yard, Section 30 169, Building Fronts and Sides of Bunny Streets or Public Areas, Rotten and Weakened Wood, uh, the Street of Butt or any other building about any other streets other than Laurel Street. This actually has facing from Emmett and Laurel. Yes. And then 30 171 broken and missing windows. And it does look, not look like the green card was signed uh, at the 414 River Street, Alaska, Florida, 32177. Is that your correct name? No, I saw that place in March. All right. Well, just so you know, the property appraiser and the tax collector have that address is the official address for this property. Oh, they, what they, is your they know that. Well, the state statute requires that's the one we look to first. Uh, and they posted the property that right yes, sir. Well, and you are here. Thank you for that. What's the correct address for your mailing? 149. I'm sorry. 119 here away. Harold Lane? Yes. Okay. Well, you're here. Thank you for coming. And the, the note, the affidavit of service was placed in the record. Is that correct? Is yes. That correct? Sir. All right. She's going to show you the violations. And Ms. Lowe, did you take the photographs you're about to show us today? Yes, sir. I did. And do they accurately represent the condition of property over there which you took from? Yes, sir. All right. Please proceed. This particular photo was taken on March 21st, 2023, and it's uh, the side face in Emmett, and it's missing windows where the arrows are. Some windows are missing, some windows are broken. And on the next one. All right, so back up, back up. So this has to do with broken or missing windows. That's correct. And there are how many? There was nine. At broken and missing windows. Throughout the house, yes, sir. And this is around the house. That's not restricted to the. That's front. correct. That's correct. Okay. What needs to be done to fix that? Just um, board them up or do you need new windows? They have current residents, so they would just need to be replaced and moved or repaired. Very well, that excuse me. Yeah. Oh, wait, we get done. You get your things. Okay, next one. Yes, sir. The next one is an updated photo of my follow up, which was taken um, actually yesterday because they've been working on the house. So the top ones have been repaired. And now we're just looking at the bottom ones that um, are left on this side of the house. And then the rest of the windows, it was a total of five left that are still broken, missing windows. So when were the tops repaired? Um, they've been working on it over the last few months. After you began contact with the owner? Um, they've had it in the process. They were just waiting on the worker to get to them. Um, but I learned that after the fact from the renters. Did you become convinced they weren't going to get it finished? They've been they've been working on it. There, there's a lot that needs to be done, so they are making progress. Um, but with our policy, we just keep moving forward until it comes into compliance. Hold on, your thoughts. Go on next. So that, are those part of the nine windows? They were. They some of them are fixed. So there was five left. So we're now five. Left. Yes, sir. This is the side that's facing Laurel, and it has um, the broken, cracked window on the bottom, which where you see the arrow. And 
This is an updated photo. Um, the same side where you can see the broken window, he's repaired the top. Um, and then the bottom, it just got the, the rotten, just the wood. The wood is placed where the window should come all the way down. And this here was taken on March 21st. Um, yes, sir, the rotten leaking wood on the rim of the bottom part of the house. And then where the one arrow is, it's real dark where, it's, where it was rotten. Okay, so I'm looking at on the outside of the house. Yes, sir, face and image. Street. This is face and image, yes, sir. In the street. And what is that I'm looking at? Is that flooring? This is um, the Ooh. second part of the, the house, uh, like the second uh, floor where it's rotten and weakened wood. That was the original picture on March 21st. Then if you go to the next one where I did a follow-up, this was April 22nd. He's replaced some of the rotten we can wood up there. So what's left is on the second floor to the left of the house. And then you can see a little bit more of the rotten we can wood um, where the arrows are pointed. That's what's left on the left side of the house when you're facing him. Right. That's just a different picture of it to show. Um, he has tried to bring it into compliance on that, but that is just what's left on the follow up on April 26th. All right, anything else? Um, the only thing was that there was some um, trash and debris that was visible from the roadway. This one was originally taken March 21st. Um, the property owner has complete issues. Go to the next photo. Some of it has been removed, but that's what's left. And that was taken on April 26th. So how long have you been in contact with the uh, owner, Mr. Vespo, regarding this work? I actually met him the first time today, um, but I've been in contact with the, the mayors and the, I spoke to a couple of the workers that come and talk to me. Okay. So progress is ongoing. Yes, sir. Is there anything in particular that triggered this? We um, have received violation? several complaints, and even during this work process, I've received two more. Does any of this work report permits? Um, no, sir, not what I'm seeing. Um, uh, no, we're in agreement. No permits required. We start with this. March 21st. This is historic. This, yeah, so I'm curious if he's doing the work without permits. Nobody's alleged that. I'm just I see where we are. Window replacements require permits. And because this is in a historic district, it also requires a certificate of compliance. And what about the weekend wood background requires certificates? It depends on the extent of the repair. Um, but in, in our case, that's that's a building department determination. In my world, um, there are, as far as the historic district items are concerned, there are things on the certificates of approval, I'm sorry, certificates of appropriateness that I can approve at the staff level. So if it's relatively minor repairs, broken windows, um, small areas of wood replacement, that sort of thing, I can approve that at the staff level. But things like the replacement of the windows have to go to so really, he needs two doorways. He needs to cross one a certificate of appropriateness for the wood repair and a permit for the window yes. replacement. And a certificate of appropriateness for the window replacement. Yeah. How long does it take to generally get those? As I mentioned earlier, if an application is received in the next week or so, we can get it on the July agenda. If not, we won't go into in more than 90 days. No, I'll be able to do it. So it could be it could be within 90 days. Getting a permit will take may take longer. All right. Thank you. Mr. Zeppel, do you know you need a permit to replace these windows? I did not. Uh this is all All right guys. Uh some progress is being made. Do you have any problem? What, what's your time frame for getting these done? Well, I guess I got to stop.
we're making progress. We're not going to stop now, but we're telling well, right? Now you know what the law is, but there's so, uh, you want to stop hold, hold what I'm doing, right? Stop working on it. I'm not saying we're going to issue that. No, that's what they're saying. She's saying, saying, what what she's saying, what she's saying I got to wait for a permit. So just stop what I'm doing, stop the process. You'll need, right. to talk with, you'll need to talk with the yeah. government officials. Yeah. Stop the process. Do you get this? So you, want that, you write my ass. You want the stuff done. I start doing the stuff. And, that and now you tell me, oh, okay, guys, we're not going to have that argument here. Okay, Con, okay. it's a point of for two violations regarding Ron. windows, trash and debris, actually three. And we can win. The trash and debris looks like something we saw without a permit. You the, uh, well, actually, the second photo you pull up, it was a jet ski, uh, uh, a grill. Is that stuff his personal stuff he's keeping or that trash? Who determines that? It's still in the yard. And well, where's it supposed to go? It's a grill. And I'll see it. Where were you to put it outside? Maybe the yard. Where would you like me to put it? Again, as long as it's not visible to the front of the street side of the house. Put it a little side. Eight around? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Don't, don't okay. Yeah, it's not a, okay. that is, I just said, we, until you can get these, the permits and the certificate of uh, appropriation, okay. appropriateness from the uh, historical board since you're in a historical neighborhood, we would ask you to stop working until you get that in situation. Okay. Uh, or we can come out and it's put another violation. Don't even yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, yeah, come out and put a stop on. That's not the point of the Yeah. All right. Based on what, anything else you want to add? Yes. Sure. So we're just going to last, year four last, okay. new roof. To spend seven thousand dollars at house ten because it's a process and everybody's issue here they had today goes down one thing people don't want to work on the old houses they want to do new bills they want to go in there and make new bucks so you can't get somebody in there it's hard to get somebody somebody came from a different state to do this and that's one thing the other thing is there's a lady who lives next door and that's where all the issues is for this place she's trying to sell her house and it's not getting done fast enough when her buyer would come over in her house, and so she's complaining, and I understand that, but she bought the house with this conditions there. So, but but I started working on the house before they even said anything to me. They didn't come to me and say, "Hey, this is." I started already, and that, and I'm doing what they're wanting me to do. Now they want me to stop. That really does it's not logical, but it makes sense. But I'll, I'll comply. I want to comply and and get this taken care of. You're, you're not the first owner, nor will you be the last that's been caught up in this kind of false part. I wish I could tell you that all your neighbors are going to be just wonderfully upset about everything you want to do, but they complain. And unfortunately, that's what the way it is. One of the good things in Florida law now is, as of what, year before last, you can't complain anonymously. You have to actually put your name on the line as to who you are. Oh, I know uh, it. So, but the, County can also, or excuse me, the city can also find violations on their own, but nonetheless, complaints are not, no longer anonymous. Here's the deal. Well, look, I've got limited jurisdiction to deal with this. I mean, um, and I've seen this before where people have been hit with violations. I, I can't have all those down the front yard by the street. Here's what I'm like. I think it's big. Uh, I'm going to a violation of 3032B for the trash and debris, 169 for the rotten weekend wood that faces uh, Royal Street. That's all been replaced, John. And then the uh, broken and missing windows, 30-171. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to get a permit in 30 days. We moved it now. So I'm, I'm going to vote for the end of August. What's August 31st, Karen? Uh, 90 days will be August 15th, a Monday. Give them to the end of August. They don't know when that meeting is going to be. What, what day of the week is 31st? Um, I will look in that for you, sir. Okay. Your Honor, so I tell the guy to stop working. He pulled off the job and goes somewhere else to work. Why well, I can't get him back? Yeah, let me you talk with the city about what you'd like to do about that. Sir, August 31st is a Thursday. Thursday, okay. We're going to uh, we'll require compliance no later than the end of business on August 31st, 2023. Compliance is going to be getting the permit for the wooden replacement and getting any other permits that are required to do the work. But the uh, the debris in AR need to go within 30 days. I'll that be done. That's going to be on July 16, 2023. Um, let me see what else. All right. Ryan, we can move it. Now give you a chance to go through the. That's what I'm saying. Exclude one possible. I don't even want to know at this point. Uh, 
make sure uh, work with this low or fine on those things. When, when you get the art thing, call and tell it's done. Awesome. When you get yeah. the, the woods done, call and tell it's done. Gotcha. And then get your permits done and get the reviews done. You got 90 days on that. So, okay. Yeah. We're going to get to the public for 11. Sorry, I complicated your work, but we'll deal with it. All right. We're making out. Anything else? Okay, so that brings us back to um, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Back to the top of our agenda, what's we'll listed as case number two, uh, the second position, case two zero two three zero eight zero four hundred North Fourth Street. And this is owned by the Herbert S. Delaney and Tracy Ledford. Is that correct? Yes. Or Herbert S. Delaney or Tracy Ledford for anyone representing either of those individuals present. Mr. Green? Yes, it's further third four seven came to and those are cameras send out five two one twenty three. Okay. No green call will return. Complex post number five six twenty twenty three. State post number five two twenty twenty three. This is just a view of the housing. That's fourth street. That's not fourth street. Not street. All right, just for the record, we do not have any respondents present. We have any responses? Waiting in North Carolina. Okay. okay. And this address 13432 Providence Road, Wake, North Carolina 21800. There's another address, so it's like, oh, we have 328104. That is the official address of record on property for Asian Towns Yes. Okay. And you posted the property? Yes, sir. You have your affidavit of posting? Yes, sir. Shall we posting on May 2nd at the property, also on May 2nd here at City Hall, correct? Yes. Sir. Any contact with Mr. No. Delaney or Ms. Ledford? No, sir. All right, please proceed. This is was taken April 11th, 2023. That's massive sweep. All right, this is deteriorating paint. You're yes. looking at, see, we had one violation building fronts and sides of running streets of public area paint deteriorating. This is on Fourth Street. Madison. Is this that's a that's corner lot? Is this, corner lot? Sir. is this a corner lot? Yes, sir. Which other? Which Madison. Other? Madison? Yes, sir. And number one, is this view from which street? That's Madison Street. And the paint is what? Flaking? Yes, sir. It's moldy? Is it moldy? I can't tell. Um, it's flaking. It's flaking? Yes, it's a better picture than this. This is also Madison's. Yes, it was taken by to make okay. That's the same it's, um, second floor. They need to remove the deteriorated paint and put it uniform visible paint. This is uh, by 12 to 2B. Is it number 2B? Yes, sir. Okay. So on what Fourth Street and Madison Street basically needs to be repainted. Yes, sir. Removed. Or all the parts that can be seen from Fourth Street. Yes. Madison Street. Yes, this is required for that. Yes, sir. That's Madison Street. Yes, sir. And this was taken in May twelfth. <laughs> So is it's a pressure wash off of all the scrape all the paint off and it's uniform. Yes, sir. Is that a violation? Would be in compliance. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Does it have to be painted? Yes, sir. <laughs> if you go you go on pressure wash, you have to expose wood after you paint it. Stain. There's no there's no houses in the city that have exposed wood.
Well, apparently, as long as ninety percent of it's painted. Away the code. Who wrote that? Not us. <laughs> <laughs> Not us. <laughs> for surfaces were once painted for stain. Not more than ten percent of the surface may be free of paint. So if they come in and pressure wash it, and ninety percent of it's paint, the other side who can't see. Can, can't well, see. Not, that'd be ninety percent of the side you can see. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Does this require a permit? No, sir. Time you want to give them? Oh, man, it's okay. too slurry out there. Last call for uh, Herbert F. Delaney or Tracy Ledford or anyone representing either of those individuals. Stephen, here no one would like to find a violation of 30 169 of the Municipal Code to Alaska due to deteriorating paint on the building front and sides of Lake Street to public areas. Lake Street here is actually abutting the side and street to be North 4th Street and Madison Street. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, what kind of violations uh, and require that the property be brought into compliance by repainting those sides which abut at a minimum those sides which abut Fourth Street and Madison Street. Uh, compliance must be completed or later than the end of business on Monday, August 15th, 2023, 90 days from today. All right, next case. Uh, it's like 2023-83, property located at one. 623 Eagle Street. Uh, property owner appears to be Rennell Miller Jr. Is Rennell Miller Jr. present? Can you hear one with the picture of me? Yes, ma'am. Um, property was first observed before 17, 2023. I know the parents are sent out 5 2, 23. No green car return. Complex post was 5 6, 2023. Site post was five two twenty twenty. All right. No matter to due process, it does not look like we have a signed green card. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Did we get an envelope back or anything? Did we need to why? Did they send an envelope or a green card? Okay. All right. The address of record appears to be the 1623 Eagle Street. Is that correct? Yes. Sir. That's the official address of the public, uh, public records of the property place or tax collector? No, no, sir. Um, it's actually even down south somewhere. Why did we send, did we send it there? Yes, sir. Oh, that's why I don't know on the record. Where you send it? Yeah. Anyway, here is green color. Oh, yeah. Looks like one, two, three, West Second Avenue, Pearson, Florida, AC one zero zero two two nine zero four. Yes. And that's the official record. Yes. Yeah. Did you post the property on May 2nd? Yes, sir. And you know the FDA was service in the ring. Yes, sir. Any contact with Mr. Miller? Yes, oh, no. We were living on this property. There was quarters. Um, so the police went in that day. I called them. The one that was open, and they came in and got some people out of the house and they secured the house. That's the one that I was secure. Okay. Two thousand three alleged violations thirty dash thirty two a of the city code for the condition of public nuisances over grass thirty dash thirty two a trash and debris and thirty dash one seventy six of the city code for exterior property areas a shed is deteriorated. And you have the photographs for us. Yes. Sir. And did you take the photographs? Yes. Sir. And did they accurately represent the condition of property and data that you took? Yes. Sir. Please. This is uh, taken 418-2023, uh, trash and debris. Okay, back up. Yes, sir. This is just man-made debris here. Yes, sir. Number one. Next. Taken 512-2023, 1B. 
you have to bring to the another two to the three that will take the 18 to the three. This is five, twelve, twenty between two B. This is trashing the breed in the backyard. That's sixteenth street. I want to say We're trashing the breed. Needs to be mowed. Is that the breed removed? Yes, sir. Five, twelve, twenty three. The same breed on sixteenth street. You can see it with sixteenth street, not fifteenth street. This is because of the shade deteriorating. Okay. Uh, this is five, twelve, twenty three. All right, tell me about the shed. Is it like a metal shed? Yes, sir. Falling apart. So what's the solution for that? Remove. Mm -hmm. Repair the police are removed. Is that a part from it? Uh, I don't think so. Is this a third district? No, it's not. How big does it have to be before you need a demolition for that? Uh, I'm saying you don't need a permit to remove this. Uh, uh, that's a good question, Mr. Brian. Get, get that answer, get back to your belt. I'm going to use the political move on that one. But right now, it's a no, you don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, anything else? Um, overall practice. <clears throat> Just the vegetation? Yes. I'm looking at picture five. That's from. It so just needs to be mowed, is that correct? Yes, yeah, that's from 16th Street, North 16th Street. And this is another picture of the same 512 23, 5B. And the property's vacant? Yes, sir. Anything else? No, sir. <clears throat> so basically what they need to do is mow the grass, keep it maintained, remove the man-made debris in the yard, and then remove the shed. Yes, sir. None of which requires a permit, at least as far as we know. Okay. All right, based on the evidence and testimony presented, we're going to find a violation of 40 42A of the secret, prohibited conditions of public nuisances due to overgrown grass and vegetation. A violation of section 30 42A, prohibited conditions of public nuisances due to trash, man made trash, and debris in New York, and a section 30 176, exterior property areas due to deteriorating shed, which needs to be removed. Um, or in the order of finding violations or part of the property, I'm going to bring the property into compliance no later than the end of business. On Friday, June 16, 2023, $35 a day. A fine of $25 per violation will begin to accrue uh, on Monday, June 18, uh, in the event of non compliance. Okay. All right. Anything else? No. If not, we'll go to that case number 2023-38, property located at 319 North 7th Street. Property owner appears to be Annette Evans. Annette S. Evans. Is Annette S. Evans present? Anyone representing her? I see you hearing that one, Mr. Green. Yes, sir. Probably further observed, uh, 8 1 2022, 20, actually. Uh, the notes were handed out 5 2 2023. 20, uh, no card was returned. Complex postal was 5 6 2023. 20, the site postal was 5 2 2023. 20, All right. In due process matters, See, the green card was returned unsigned at the address of 
11541 Pumpkin Seed Court, Orlando, Florida 32821. And that's the official address of the record? Yes, sir. And you posted the property? Yes, sir. And willing to post it? Uh, May 6th. Should May 2nd on your affidavit? Oh, no, no, May 2nd. And you include a photograph of the posting, is that correct? Yes, sir. Had any contact at all with Ms. Evans? Um, back in eight, August of 2022, yes, sir. They was building and they didn't have a permit, and I actually put a stop work on, on it, and I haven't heard of Bummer since. And the building just started deteriorating. Well, the shell started deteriorating. So, North Seventh, is that a historic district? We're just outside of it. Do you have the map available? No, no, ma'am, I do not. Okay. That's uh I believe we can find that on the city site. I think it stops east of there. I'm sorry. I believe it stops east of there, but I, I really need to look at the map. Isn't it on your on the website? Yeah, it's on the website under planning board, historical preservation board. Okay. So, the historic district boundary there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll announce it. Outside the district. Yeah, it's yeah. outside the district. This one said. I couldn't remember what the fourth or fifth. But. Right. Right. Have we already done the, the 400 North 4th Street? I'm sorry. Case? Have we already done the 400 North 4th Street case? Yes. That's two on the agenda? Yes. Yes. I'm pretty sure that's an historic history. We need the paint. Well, then we still need to see the right. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> very restricted. Okay. Uh -huh. So, in that case, that would be having like a paint. Okay. Next okay. over for our church review. Depends on what color they want to use to paint it. If that's something that I can approve at the staff level. Or is there an official palette of colors? <laughs> Not official talent, it's all in the Secretary's interior standards. Okay. It depends on the. You know, Dr. George Charles didn't say, oh, it's going to be New Orleans and have official talent colors. I'm sorry, sir, what was that? You're not going to join those cities that have the official talent of colors? <laughs> <laughs> It's sort of facetious. You'd be amazed how many times it comes up when you have an official palette of colors and somebody doesn't want to choose one of them. So let's, we're, we're missing the record. So let's hold that yes, thought yes, and come back to that. This is not an historic district. Correct. Okay. And we're talking about the property uh, at 319 North Stone. Mm -hmm. All right. We have two alleged violations 30 32 a prohibited conditions, public nuisance, and trash and debris. Rear side, rear and side walls, walls deteriorating. That was these 30 170. Which have a section or an exterior. The record includes 30 169. So which violation? I don't know. I don't know. Got what I have. Yeah, 170 on the notice. So which is it? 170. Okay, can you give me a look at that? Yes, sir. What was that? 170. Oh, you need me to pull it? Yeah. Well, let's see, we had another case with that in three, thirteen, what's that? We are inside walls. Uh, yes, the thirty dash one seventy. I will put it up there for the group. Um, rear and side walls of all structures shall be repaired and painted to present a neat and fresh appearance. Rear walls <clears throat> should be painted to cover evenly 
all miscellaneous. All right. So basically, we're looking at deteriorating walls, yes. not paint, but walls. Deteriorating walls at the bottom. Okay. And uh, on the rear and side of the house. Yes. And then trash and debris throughout the property and put it as three two things. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. You're about to show some photographs. Did you personally take these photographs? Yes, sir. And do they accurately represent the condition of the property and damage you took? Them? Yes, sir. All right. Please proceed. This is the first picture of 411 2023. And you see the walls are leaning. Is that a wall of what? The house? Yes, sir. I think so it was the house yeah. Yes, sir. I think they were trying to build a, another house on top of another slab, the house that they tore down. Well, how far are you? So we have a roof on this house? No, sir. There's no roof either? No, sir. All right, looks like it's under something. Go ahead and show me the rest of it, see if I can figure out what you mean. This is um, taken by 12, 23, one Is that the tarp over the top yes. of this? Yeah, they tried to protect the wood, but it's been there like a year or so. Weather has gotten rid of the tarp, and now it's raining on the wood. It's not pressure treated, so it's starting to rot. Okay, that was 1B. What's that? That's uh, 411. So we got number two now. So what am I looking at? It looks like there is an old porch, mm -hmm. a floor to a house, yes, and studs. And you put the studs in, and then they start they start putting plywood around it, like they were gonna build a new house on top of an old slab. What has the house ever had walls? They told it looks like the porch is there and have something. Is. Yes, it was. It was a house there. They tore it down all the way to the slab. And so they're putting new studs up? Yes, sir. And they're deteriorating? Yes, sir. What does that mean, they're deteriorating? Are they rotting where they're standing? Or? Yes, they're rotting and they're falling. It's starting to fall apart. Okay. So under the code, I mean, is that a wall yes, under the code? Yes. So the studs without anything on them is a wall? You have walls around other. You see what I'm getting at? I mean, yes, it looks like somebody tore this house down. Here we got torn down as well. And down now they put these studs up and the studs are deteriorating. Is a stud, is that a wall? It's the next piece, sir. Does the code say that's a wall? The no this. Half the wall, half the house is built, the other half is it. So you said so three of the three sides have walls. The back and the two sides have walls and they're starting to fall. So what's the remedy to this? What's it? it so all you have to do is replace the studs? Take no. down the studs? Please remove or repair. Well, what does that mean? You have you have to tell him specifically what he must do. To bring yeah, that to place, the place the rotten wood and straighten the wall back up, make sure they're back where it's supposed to be for the wall. Because the building inspector to come in and say, okay, um, does it still have a permit? No, sir. That's why I couldn't start work on the on back in August 2022. And he has been, uh, they haven't been back since. Does it need a permit to take it down? Um, yes, sir. So the minimum remedy. Going to the city is that the new studs that are up have to be taken down, and that requires them. Yes, sir. Okay. And that's the attraction the bridge that was taken by 12, 20, 23. Uh, I think that's with the roof of the old house that they tore down, and that's considered trash and debris. Okay. And that's Did they have a demolition permit for the house? It's not yes. for us. I'm just curious. Yes, sir. Okay. That's more trash in the view. That's 512 and All right. Anything else? No, sir.
Right. I'm not sure what a wall is in the city code. You haven't told me. You have to put the you have to put the to go down and go down and go down the wall. Go up and go down. See the wall right there, Mr. Brown? See the wall right there, Lee? I see some studs. Is that making a wall? I'm looking for something else, David. I understand what you're looking for. How this leans. Yes. Okay. All right. This plywood, this plywood attached to the wall, Mr. Brown. See the wall, the real wall back there on the back. It's okay. plywood attached to the studs. All right. Based on the evidence and testimony, we're going to find a violation of 30 32 a prohibited conditions of public nuisance to be trash and debris. And it's a violation of section 30 170 rear and side wall wall deteriorating. He does need a permit to take down these walls. Yes, That's correct. Yes, sir. And the city is looking forward to have the walls removed within 60 days. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, we'll require. Uh, Compliance with both violations related to the business uh, Monday, July 17th, 2023. In the event of non-compliance, a $25 a day foot fine per violation will be yet to accrue um, the next day, the Tuesday, July 18th, 2023. Okay, Ms. Walsh, let's return if we can to 400 North 4th Street. And the work to show we're returning to Case number 2023 80. Again, I'm going to inquire whether Herbert Delaney or Tracy Ledford are present. So you can hear no one. Um, this is apparently in the North Historic District. Yes, sir. And the violation had to do with paint deterioration. And they were given, what, 90 days? Uh, yes, sir, 90 days. To bring property into compliance, which would be intended. <laughs> However, that now requires a review of the paint color. Yes. Yes. For the store district code. Can that be done within that 90 days? Yes, it can. They submit it. Yes, they get on the stick. Yes. Yeah. There's a meeting in July. There is, but if the paint color is something that is suitable, I can approve it at the top oh. level and it won't take very long at all. And just for the, the joy of asking you, what is a suitable pink color under like the city code? According to the code, it says the same as the existing color or something similar. Of which? The same as the existing color or something similar. Okay. Do we know what the existing color is? Is that up there? Yes, it like Maybe it's green. Well, bless you. At least you have something. <laughs> That's not the Benjamin Moore 83. Right. <laughs> right. Right. South Carolina color theory. Mm -hmm. okay. And I apologize for having yeah, to be yeah. open this. I was telling them that's pretty good. Records are going to have to blend in and go get that hearing. All right. Very good. Following that hearing, we're going to go to the final case, uh, which is case number 2350, property located at 918 North for Peace. And I thought the owner of the record appeared to be Keith uh, Woodard and Judith E. Woodard, husband and wife. Um, this way? Yes, sir. Um, this is case number 2023-050. The location is 918 North 13th Street. First observed the violations on March 22nd, 23. Um, set it for notice for hearing on May 7th. Um, the original 10 day compliance on the green card was signed, but I have not received um, the notice of hearing green card back yet on the um, posting. Did you post the property? Yes, sir, I did. Complex posting was on May 6th, mm -hmm. and site posting was May 1st. For the record, the green card is signed, maybe. I can only imagine that it was his son. It was his son? Yes, sir. How old was his son? 13. Okay. But do you put you post to the property? Yes, the sir. And you have your update posted in the record. Yes, sir. Yeah. If you if you go to any place today and you're asked to sign something with your fingernail, and you ask them, how do you know it was me, really? 
and they will take because we photograph, we, we take videotape of every signature, we say the science. It really doesn't matter what you put on the line. This one, I don't know how you tell who was there. They didn't put the name down. And probably somebody who's 13 is not good service. You couldn't serve us with a lawsuit, somebody who's 13. So that's good that you post it. Have you had any contact with the owners? Yes, sir. What's been their reaction to this? Honestly, he's been great. Um, I spoke to him this morning. He was going to try to be here. Um, the only thing, honestly, we have left on this property is more than we'll do. But with our policy, we're just going to move forward until the homeowner gets it done. Um, he requested for 30 days. Um, he's got a pressure washer and a painter coming, but they won't be there for two weeks. Right. You alleged a violation of 30 169 building fronts and sides, mold and buildings. Did you take the photographs you're going to show us? Yes, sir, and I did. they accurately represent the condition of the property on the day that you took them? Correct. Please proceed. Um, this photo was taken March 6, 2023. Um, with mold and mildew on the front and the side of the house. You can see it on from the roadway of North 13th Street. This is the follow up on May 25th, 2023. The mold and mildew is still there facing the roadway. This is the other side of the house. This was taken. This was the first one that was taken. Aaron, can you scroll up a little bit, please? Oh, other way. Sorry. You're fine. Um, March 6, 2023. And it's got the mold and mildew around the on the left side. And you can see it from the roadway. And this was an updated taken May 25th, and you still see the mold and mildew facing the roadway. All right, so basically, it needs to pressure wash the sides visible from uh, North 13th Street. Yes, sir. And the purchase section of 30 169 is included in the record. Final call for Keith Woodard or Judith Woodard. You can hear the one is they've been making progress. Is cities interested? In, they have, sir. I've actually taken off all the violations except for this one. He's closed them all out. Based on the evidence and testimony presented, we're going to find a violation of 30 169 of the Mr. Code. Building fronts and sides of lake streets are public areas. Mold and mildew on the sides at a butt um, or the front abutting north 14th Street. Um, we're going to find the violation appropriate and in an order requiring compliance within 30 days of today's hearing that is the end of business on Friday, June 16th, 2023. A final twenty-five dollar per day will commence in the event of non-compliance beginning on Monday, June two, twenty twenty-two. There being no further business before the special magistrate, we will declare today's proceedings concluded.